Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Russo, and I was blessed with Andrew's friendship for over 18 years. To the masses, Andrew's legacy will always be tied to his remarkable accomplishments following his diagnosis. He'll be remembered for those prestigious awards and for his contributions to research through the trials he pioneered. He'll be remembered for Driven to Cure and the unique way he used his love for cars to benefit others in his situation. He'll be remembered by his story, an illustration of positivity, grit, and selflessness in the midst of adversity. And if nothing else, he'll maintain a record for the most speeding tickets avoided in the state of Maryland. <laughs> But Andrew was more than a cancer-fighting, cop-dodging car enthusiast. He had a life before his illness. His first dream car actually wasn't a car at all. It was a center console Boston Whaler. All you car guys can thank me and my dad for dragging him to car shows instead of boat shows. Before the orange GTR, there was this red Volvo with a rusty roof rack that was always packed and ready for adventure. Before sporting kith and designer sneakers, he was running around in Kingswood Camp t-shirts and ragged Nikes that reeked from a day of soccer, golf, and longboarding with friends. Before he was caring for his dog Milo, he was caring for his kindergarten campers at summer at Norwood, making sure they also didn't poop where they weren't supposed to. Andrew's life may have been more normal then, but undebatable is the fact that Andrew was always, always destined for a life of influence. The cancer didn't change Andrew. It simply became the vehicle he used to share himself with the world. Each one of us in this room have different memories with Andrew, but I want to share some of the things I will miss most about him hoping they will highlight his many admirable qualities. I'll miss Andrew's phone calls, the ones that made my heart leap because it meant new adventure was just around the corner. Andrew's energy was unmatched. He lived a life, he lived life a quarter mile at a time, his mind always racing ahead to a new experience and who he could do it with. Hey Mike, he'd say. Do you want to play some golf this weekend? Or something like, I'm going to Whitetail this weekend to ski. You in? Or my all-time favorite, come to the Outer Banks with me and my family for the week. It'll be fun. Andrew made these phone calls knowing that I couldn't hit a fairway, <laughs> that I would tumble down a ski slope, and that I would definitely say something stupid in front of his parents at the beach. <laughs> but that never mattered. He was inclusive and always saw the best in all of his friends. He loved adventure, but even more, he loved bringing others with him. I think so many of us can be thankful for Andrew including us on those journeys over the years. I'll miss Andrew's vulnerability. Larger than life characters like him often lack the humanizing elements that allow others to relate to them. But Andrew never did. Andrew was open with his challenges and never afraid to ask for help. As kids, we would tag team spelling quizzes and math homework. As we got older, we would sort out thoughts about girls or how to handle guys in high school that gave us a hard time. Later, he would share the challenges of keeping up with Driven to Cure, the harshness of his newest treatments, and how much he hated dog fur all over his house. <laughs> In May of 2015, Andrew began calling his friends to tell them the news of his diagnosis. He wasn't seeking pity. Instead, he was rallying his life teammates. He was humble enough to know he couldn't go in alone and compassionate enough to know that we wanted to be there with him. Andrew's ability to be honest made his positivity fully genuine. His zest for life was palpable and contagious because he was real.
Finally, I'll miss the way Andrew loved those closest to him. Andrew had a way of connecting with new friends. He could meet you for the first time, and if you shared a common interest, he treated you like he'd known you for a lifetime. But Andrew reserved a profound love for those closest to him. Evident with Andrew was the appreciation he had for his dad, Bruce, and his hard work that provided so much opportunity for him and Tommy. Evident was the respect he had for his mom, Sarah, and the strength she inspired him with as a teacher and role model. Evident was how proud he was of his brother, Tommy, his lifetime sidekick, whom Andrew was always willing to bring along to meet his friends and join him on the next project. And of course, evident was his radiance for Haley and his insatiable desire to always go above and beyond for her to affirm his love. And there's so many more. Cameron and Charlie, I met both of you yet for the first time yesterday, but I felt like I've known you for a lifetime because of the way Andrew spoke with excitement about you both. He was so proud to be your older cousin. And to Nick, Baker, Luke, Zev, Ryan, Merlin, Chris, Thomas, Charlie, Aloy, and so many more that I'm missing. Andrew spoke so animatedly about your friendship and his memories with you. Andrew loved us powerfully, and he was rarely afraid to make that love known. Andrew, being your friend is one of the greatest honors I could have. As you look down on us today, I hope you marvel in the God-given gifts that you blessed us with during your time here. You brought together people from so many different walks of life. We all fell in love with you and will forever be missing that part of our heart that you filled. I look forward to an eternity with you, my oldest friend and I hope they play Spurs games in heaven. <laughs> Race in peace, buddy. <laughs>